Hey, how's it going? I'm Sean, and in this tutorial, I'll show you how to set up your Unity 2D project so that your pixel art graphics don't warp, flicker, or show seams. I'll also show you how you can easily change the pixel scaling to suit your game's art style. This method will also help to keep the resolution consistent across all screen resolutions and aspect ratios. So before we start, I want to show you the before and after, just so you can get an idea of what I'm actually talking about. I'm going to play the game as it is, and as you can see, all the pixels are warping and it looks terrible. The grass tiles aren't currently showing any seams, which is good, but that's another common issue for 2D games that this method will help to fix. So just to demonstrate, I'll turn on the script that we'll be creating, and as you can see, it looks much nicer, and you don't get any weird distorting. If I increase the pixel scale, you can now see that the pixels are bigger, which might be the style you're going for. Alright, that's what we're going to be doing, so let's get started. When using sprites, there's a few things that you should do. Firstly, you want to set the pixels per unit to the size you want to use. My sprites are 32 by 32, and I want one sprite to be one unity unit, so I'll set it to 32. Make sure the filter mode is set to point, and sometimes compression can ruin your sprites, so I'd recommend turning it off. So getting back to the task at hand, I'm going to create a new script, and I'm going to call it Camera Helper 2D. I'm going to attach it to the camera, and then I'm going to open it in the editor. So we're going to need a few variables. We'll have a public float pixels per unit. That's going to determine how many pixels we're using to represent one unity unit. Then we'll have a public float zoom. That's going to determine how many pixels we want to aim for when resizing the screen. Next we'll set up a public ball use pixel scale. We'll use this in case you want to have a fixed pixel scale instead of scaling to the screen size. And then we'll have the pixel scale. I'll also create another variable to keep our quote unquote real camera position. We won't be using transform.position because we're rounding the position and we want to keep it as smooth as possible. Because if you can imagine, if you tell it to move small amounts, it'll keep rounding down and the camera won't move, which isn't what we want to happen. Next we'll add a method called apply zoom. This is going to be what's going to fix most of the problems. So if we're not using pixel scale, we'll find the smallest screen dimension. So if this is for portrait as well as landscape, it won't zoom all the way in. And then we'll calculate the pixel scale that's closest to the amount of zoom we want. After that, we'll set the camera's orthographic size based on the pixel scale. So the way the orthographic size works is that there'll be that many unity units from the center of the screen to the top of the screen. So we're saying one unit is the pixels per unit multiplied by the pixel scale. So then if we go screen height divided by that number, we'll get the number of units we want to show in the whole screen. And because orthographic size is the amount for half the screen, we need to half that value. So that's going to fix the warping issue when we implement it, but the seams or the flickering issues are still going to show up. So to fix that issue, we're going to create a method called round to nearest pixel. It's going to take in the position coordinate and it's going to return the rounded value. So we get the pixels per unit of the screen, not the pixels per unit we're using in the game, but the amount of actual screen pixels. Then we convert the position float value to the position in screen pixels and round that number to snap to the nearest pixel. Then we're converting that pixel value back to unity units and returning it. Now we're going to want to access the position outside this script. We could either make the camera position public or write a getter method. I'm not going to make the position public because I only want the script to be able to set its value. So in this case, I'm just going to add a method to get the camera position. So we have the method to round a value to the nearest pixel. Now we need to create the method that's going to use it. So we'll add a method called adjust camera, and that's going to set the position of the camera based on our camera position variable, and it's going to round the X and Y to the nearest pixel. Just to reiterate, we're not just rounding the camera's transform directly because we want to keep the precision and smoothness. If you round the camera's transform directly, and for example, you do a slow pan, the camera won't move. So that's why we keep it in a separate variable. So now we're going to need a way to set the position. So I'm going to add two methods, one to move the camera by an amount, and another to set it directly. So we're going to apply the zoom, update the position, then apply the adjustment to the camera. That's everything we're going to need for this script. All we need to do now is set up a camera controller to call these methods. So let's do that now. I'm going to create a new script and call it camera controller. Then I'm going to add it to the camera alongside the helper script. This is what my version of the script looks like. 
I'm going to assume that you all have your own camera script or know how to write one. But the important thing here is that you have a variable for the helper script, which is the first line there, and then you call either move or move to, which is the very last line. So the very last thing you need to do is assign your camera helper to the camera controller script in the inspector. Now, just after recording this tutorial, I realized there was a bug in the camera helper script. So in the apply zoom method where we're calculating the best pixel scale for the desired zoom, I didn't account for this number being rounded to zero. So let's just go in and clamp this value. I'm clamping it between one and eight because I don't think I'll ever need to zoom that far, but the second number can be as big as you want. So that's it for this tutorial, but just to clarify, the zoom variable is the amount of in-game pixels you want the screen to be scaled to. And if you tick use pixel scale, it'll override the zoom and use the fixed pixel scale below. If this tutorial helped you out and you want to see more of these, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.